Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails, a Grand Arena story. We're in the second half of Grand Arena Championship 6 and it's exciting, but first I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for all of the support. Well folks, I am exhausted and my voice is starting to go, so we're going to try to keep this as quick and to the point as possible. So I'm facing a dude named Sigurdurker, uh, Sigurdurker, Sigur -der -der -der. I don't know. I really like some of what I just said, so uh, we'll go with that. And uh, looking at the stats, you can see that uh, we're pretty evenly matched on uh, like middle tier mods, but my opponent does have a pretty strong advantage in tier 6. They did just have, in general, a, a little bit better. I said mods previously, but I meant relics. Uh, looking at mods, I do have a pretty distinct advantage in mods. Um, I also have a slight advantage in gear 13. He does have more gear 12 than me, uh, like that matters at all. I also have 20 more Z than my opponent, which is uh, that's probably uh, getting to the point that it's significant. Uh, in overall success, I, I have uh, done quite a bit better than my opponent, but you know that's no reason to count them out at all. Their roster is extremely strong and scary. Um, and uh, so looking at my opponent's uh, Grand Arena history, they mostly just took all their good teams for offense and went for efficiency wins. Um, and they, they'd actually been pretty successful of late. Um, but that, that being said, I've been going my full uh, defense and it's been, it's been working out for me. Uh, this, this defense that he set was all stuff that I felt like I could clear while keeping my same teams. So that's what I did. And, uh, you know, we, so we're trying to clear the bottom zone first, of course, uh, just so we know what's in the back and we can make all of our other plans as necessary. So first off, uh, my opponent didn't really put any teams that made me think really hard in the first zone. Um, I knew that I wanted to take my first order team against this Night Sisters team, uh, mostly because it... it that's my go-to Night Sisters counter, and this, this Night Sisters team is very strong, and you'll see in a minute. Like some of their hits are crazy, uh, but uh, this this is a pretty hard counter for Night Sisters at this point. Uh, so we're we're just moving right along now. I, I put the taunting tech on Kylo Ren unmasked, which means he's going to always be taunting. Uh, basically this whole match. Uh, First Order Executioner gets the uh, weapons tech and you see Mother Talzin did her big uh, AoE and it almost just straight up killed Watt and there's not really a way to heal Watt at, at this point. Like he's he's going to die sooner uh, sooner or later and um, there's not really much I can do. That, that was just a really uh, unfortunately large hit from Talzin so um, you know, the goal here is hopefully maybe I can kill all the Night Sisters before uh, Watt it dies, uh, though that feels like a pretty slim chance. So I'm trying to think of what to do here. Should I stun Talzin? What should I do? I decided if I stunned Talzin, then Watt would, uh, you know, not get fried again when she uses her basic. And, um, you know, maybe Watt can actually take one more turn, hand off one more tech, or do something helpful. Um, you know, it, that that was the hope anyways, and so uh, First Order Executioner, meanwhile, is just going crazy, killed Talzin, so that's nice, killed Asajj, and um, right here, I think I made a mistake, like, I started hitting Daka, and Daka is, frankly, she's, she's the last of our worries right now. We, we will kill her eventually, but uh, Spirit is going to be the one doing a lot of damage here, and frankly, uh, Spirit can... Uh, die here like it, it's fine if spirit dies first there's not really any point like the reason you would want to kill daka first and that the reason you always target her first here um is simply because daka is able to revive now the first order executioner was able uh, is able to prevent revives as long as he's the one who does the finishing blow so it doesn't matter at what point daka uh dies like she can just die at the end um and so you see, at, at some point, Watt did just expire, um, and, you know, rest in peace, old friend. Uh, unfortunate that that happened, but uh, we, we can 
strive to continue, I'm sure. And um, if, if you notice that the camera's been a little bit jerky here, uh, I did get a couple texts and they went through, so I deleted those, uh, you know, a couple seconds worth of uh, real time um, battle. So hope you guys can live with that. I know I can. So um, now we got rid of DACA here and, you know, it, if we wanted to try to get some health back, we could, uh, you know, just kill zombie indefinitely for a while. We just, I didn't really have any reason to do that. Watt was dead. Everyone else had max health. And so I finished it. 57 banners. You know, that, that, that's not bad. It's it's not ideal, certainly, but I, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with a lot of things, apparently, today. So uh, this next team was a little bit uh, tricky for me initially. Uh, because they have a relic Hux, but then I realized they don't have a Zeta on Hux, and that Zeta changes everything. So taking first order, or, or rather, I'm taking my resistance team here, using the double fin in the back. Uh, I've really been enjoying this composition. My uh, resistance hero fin is right now only uh, like four stars and gear 11. He does have his Zeta, but you can see like he... He throws his grenade real well, he heals, he gives turn meter, he is, he's actually, he's amazing. I, you know, even at four stars, he does some respectable damage, but he's also just, like, he provides everything that this team wants, and there, there's just not, there's not much downside to, uh, to using him, even at four stars. Like, he heals protection, and that's, that is huge in Grand Arena in that context. You really need to be able to uh, heal protection up to full, you know, and get those 60 banners if possible. So, uh, yeah, that, that is pretty important. Now, I did decide to look at his abilities for a minute and decided it was, uh, frankly, too long to actually uh, take the time to uh, read while I was in the middle of a fight. So, um, you can see here that, you know, I, I already killed Red Trooper. Red Trooper was important to kill because uh, if I kill any other first order first then red trooper is just going to uh you know shake down shake off all cooldowns and he's going to do a huge hit and he does more damage when more of his guys are dead so uh i was i had to take him out first if it was uh, a team with hux on it with the zeta i would probably not use this team but if i did i would probably try to take hux out first and just take the damage from red trooper and then take red trooper out later um but as it stood, there was no Zeta on him, and now we're just controlling the situation. Like, uh, resistance is perfect for control. We have tenacity down, and expose, and turn meter reduction everywhere if we want it. Uh, now we have healing uh, in the form of grenades from Finn, which is endlessly amusing to me. Now you see, I'm, I'm trying to take down uh, Kylo Ren unmasked here, and a lot of that is because I put the, uh, I used my special from Jedi Training Ray uh, to do some big hits on him um, and not only did that do uh, damage to him but it also uh, gave him healing immunity which you know that's why he's so tough to take down is uh, because he heals so much and if you take away that then he he doesn't have much so uh, 60 banners there and uh, you know that was that was a fairly efficient zone and we can see what's in the back and exactly as was on uh, the Grand Arena history, General Grievous with Watt, and then some weak Geonosians. Um, and now we're just going to kind of uh, flip back and forth between the zones. Initially, I thought I was going to go up top, um, decided I, I wanted to take all the teams that were uh, the most threat level first, uh, just to make sure I could get through them and uh, keep going. So, uh, you know, General Grievous is undoubtedly, undeniably the uh, the strongest team that I have yet to face and need to make sure that my counter here works. Uh, so we're, we're taking our Palpatine team with Sith Trio and Badstila, and that I've really been enjoying this, uh, this counter. You can see that, here, let, let me flash back for just a minute here. All right, so the, the screenshot is perhaps not the best, but what you're looking at is a Relic 7, General Grievous, Relic 7, B1, Relic 5, Magna Guard, and Relic 5, B2. Uh, and then uh, a pretty weak Watt, but uh, overall this is a very strong uh, and, and actually very well uh, modded team. So uh, 
as opposed to this team that I have here. Uh, Palpatine just recently got to Relic 1, um, and uh, Badstilla has like Relic 3, and the rest are, I guess Sion is Relic 1, uh, the Treya and Nihilus are gear 12, and, you know, it, it's a huge disparity. I, I don't outgear anyone except for Watt, and, you know, you don't need to outgear Watt. So, uh, you know, this team is extremely strong in terms of just overall relic strength, and they're well modded, like I said, and uh, it's still, uh, like, this team of mine can, can potentially beat it. So I won't spoil the results. Uh, what we're doing here, we have Bastila, who did all of her crazy huge debuffs uh, in conjunction with Emperor Palpatine so whenever any of these debuffs expire then the whole team gains turn meter and um, so we're just trying to keep everyone immobilized until Nihilus can eventually annihilate Grievous and uh, you know so that means we do not want to use Palpatine special to heal himself because that hurts General Grievous's health pool and that in turn forces a taunt onto someone else and the whole whole goal here is for all of the droids to survive, all of the Separatists to survive, until we get an Annihilate off on Grievous. Once we get the Annihilate off, then we can just slaughter them to our heart's content. Um, and uh, until then, you know, we're, we're just kind of jumping around. So we got fear on the Grievous, so we could actually right now, if we wanted to, we could kill one of these droids if we had the means. Uh, and then Grievous would take a turn, but because he's feared, he wouldn't actually do anything anything, uh, but I didn't really have anything in reach to do that, so instead I uh, just waited for the Annihilate, and one thing I do want to point out here, guys, is so if you get Shock onto uh, one of these characters, which is great, you want it onto B2, for example, here, uh, you know, B2 needs Shock so that he can't gain bonus turn meter and just pummel your team to death. Um, if you put Shock on him, though, and then re-stun him using Palpatine's AoE, then that shock uh, goes away. It just disappears, and uh, so, you know, then, then you have to worry about feeding him turn meter after that. Um, and uh, anyway, so we got the kill on Grievous, we got the kill on all these other guys, and um, one thing I do want to point out, Bastila can uh, regenerate her own protection, and uh, Scion can also do the same with his special, uh, not his non-AOE special. So you want to be timing things so that he can get back to max protection. 57 banners there. That's actually pretty consistent for that team and that counter, even though the gear disparity was uh, extreme. All right, so this team is actually fairly high relic that I'm facing. Uh, it's a Newt team with a Relic 5 Nest. Dooku has relics. Um, I think Newt has relics. Django does have relics. Uh, it's, it's a pretty tough team to deal with. Uh, Commander Luke is good, except there's always the threat of timing out against Nest if you're not careful, or you know letting her counter you to death if you don't have a high enough potency. And so the first thing I do, though, I want to take out uh, Relic Dooku. He could just ruin everything. Um, I did take Stormtrooper Han here just because Stormtrooper Han can regenerate his protection every time he gets hit. So, you know, he even if he ends up not doing anything, he, he probably won't cost us banners. Um, and so we're taking out Droidica here. Droidica can one-shot one of our characters if we're not careful. And you see, I, I did one big hit with Han against Nest there. Uh, and uh, that's that's just to kind of get the ball rolling. We, we want to take all of her protection off, which we did. And then once she takes a turn, it, you know, she's about to take a turn. Uh, once she takes a turn, uh, we're going to... Exp we paid extortion, and then she gained just a small enough amount of protection, that bonus protection there, that we could shoot through it with Han and we did. Uh, we want to just take care of her as quick as possible because it can get ugly real quick if you don't kind of spread things out over time. Now Django is another huge threat here and we couldn't hurt him until now uh, so we finally did. Commander Luke if he had been one lower relic level he would have gotten taken out right here um, but he didn't and it, my my group here is looking pretty ragged to be honest um, and I was hoping that I could find a way to heal but um, instead 
the, <laughs> instead of healing, uh, Newt just killed Commander Luke. So that wasn't awesome. And once again, I get hung with 57. Um, I did get an undersize, but uh, maybe not the best result possible. But that, that was a pretty high relic team. Not, you know, <laughs> not my favorite though. So uh, now we're going to face Geonosians. You guys have, I've had a long and storied relationship with Geonosians and not being able to clear them uh, for whatever reason. And so, uh, against my better judgment, I let myself be convinced to start bringing uh, Night Sisters on offense here. And this is the first time that I have used them on offense uh, for a very long time, um, just using uh, Talzin as the lead. And, you know, my buddy Solo Base 15, he says that he has never lost the match between. Uh, Geonosians and Night Sisters. Uh, you know, he's lost it against Grievous and all these other teams, uh, but he says that it's consistent. And so, you know, I do have a freshly reliced five uh, Daka. She was only three before. She has 128 uh, starting hit points. So, uh, you know, or health rather. So we're we're just trying to uh, basically wear this Geonosian team down. We're going to do enough damage to them that eventually we can just take them out with Asajj, like eventually they'll hopefully just kill enough of my Night Sisters that aren't Daka uh, that uh, Asajj is going to be able to uh, just uh, like one shot all of them with an AoE if that's what it comes to. Um, you know, it, it looks pretty bad a lot of times in this fight, like my Night Sisters die quite a bit and um, that's, uh, you know, I I'm not experienced enough with this squad, frankly. Like I, I won't lie to you guys. I there were a lot of moments in this fight that I was very nervous, and uh, you know I'm not gonna actually tell you what the outcome is until we all discover it together, so to speak. But um, you know there are times here I'm like, <laughs> I I just don't know if I'm gonna live. Like if they had targeted Daka just a minute ago uh, instead of Asajj that last time, like Daka had an expose and was not full health, like. Maybe she lives, and you know, she probably would have lived. But um, yeah, it's it's just scary. So uh, they're targeting everyone but Daka, which is wonderful. And you know, I'm already lost the the first the, the initial five banners, so to speak. Um, you know, you want you want to finish with 60 if you can. But Night Sisters very seldom get more than 55 in any match. Um, and so we're. We're just trucking along as best we can. Now, uh, you know, we're slowly, we are wearing these guys down quite a bit. People are dying. Asajj's uh, big AoE was pretty big. It's pretty nice. Uh, killed someone. And, uh, you know, we're, it, it looks like we've won. So, probably should have waited one more time, try to get one more stun, because we're doing that feat, trying to get 100, or attempt 100 stuns. But, uh, this was good enough. So, took out the Geonosians, and now... Okay, so now we've got a Karth team that is nothing special at all, and a Shock T team with uh, Arc Trooper, randomly. Um, and R2 is in there, uh, Clone Sergeant and Cody. And, uh, you know, there's a certain YouTuber who got stuck behind a Shock T team not too long ago. Um, I won't divulge that person's name. Uh, it rhymes with uh, Meso. So, um... Anyways, they, they got stuck behind a, a Shock T team, and, you know, I I was frustrated for him because that team didn't really look that strong, and very similar to this team. Um, the difference being, I, you know, I waited this long to take this team out or to try it um, because uh, I had the trump card. Like, Padme just destroys clones. It, she she just does. It, it's not close. Um, you know, the closest it gets is when you have to kill Shock T first, and then you have to kill Fives, at which this, this composition doesn't have Fives, but if it did, uh, you know, you kill Fives, and then you have to kill Rex before Rex just annihilates your General Kenobi. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but otherwise it's a pretty easy win uh, for, for your uh, Padme squad. Uh, however, the yeah, this, this is a pretty easy, pretty laid-back team, even though it has Arc Trooper and R2, you know, and everyone has a lot of relics, um, just not that hard. So, you know, I, I incidentally killed R2. Um, really, I just wanted to kill Shock T first, and then after that, it was all just going to be easy. 59 banners, super easy fight. Um, 
probably could have undersized it, but I did not want to uh, risk that. That that seems a little bit foolhardy, uh, even for me. And now all we have is this Karth team. I have a few teams that can take it out. I have Imperial Troopers. I also have my Kira Nest team, which is fun. Uh, I wanted the full 60 banners with Troopers if I could, though. You know, I've, I've dropped a few banners that were unforeseen just because my character's dying because of the High Relics I'm facing. Um, so... Uh, troopers, you, you can do this if you use finesse here, and it, you know you, you just have to be careful. You don't want to reduce anyone's uh, health below their protection. And so you see, Zalbar is taunting now because I did exactly what I was telling you not to do. Uh, I, I reduced Karth's uh, protection without actually you know killing him first, and so we're stuck behind a taunt. Uh, you know, I was able to use AOEs to kill Karth. Um, and, you know, and gain, keep our turn meter train going. And, you know, eventually all these guys just folded. This is a pretty low gear team. Um, 59 banners, that's probably what I would have gotten with uh, the Kira team. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I got... I, I was... I was very confident that I was going to be able to beat that team with troopers, so uh, not not a big deal. Um, now in the back, a, a pleasant surprise, I haven't faced a Thrawn team for a very long time in fleets. Uh, one of the very few times I've looked forward to doing anything in fleets, and uh, you know I actually do look forward to using Finalizer eventually once it's farmed, but um, otherwise... The biggest question here was how much could I afford to undersize. I knew I wanted undersize so I could be working on the feet. I wanted to get more banners. But other than that, that I didn't really know, like, are, are Geonosian still good? Uh, I I mean, they're, they're not. But could I do it with, safely with just two reinforcements? Frankly, I probably could have gone three reinforcements, uh, or, or rather one reinforcement and gone short three. But I doubt I'll ever do that. I'm probably not brave enough, um, unless I'm desperate. So uh, here, like, I was just able to target the Geo Soldier off before he could actually do anything. And he's a huge uh, part of their damage. He calls assists. He does all these things. Um, and now we can just take care of Sunfac as quick as we can. Um, I'm looking for an opportunity to take uh, Spy out in one shot because Spy is the one who do who truly does a lot of damage. And you know, honestly. Spy is probably better off just in reserves. Uh, Spy does uh, some incredible damage from reserves as well. Uh, but that's not what my opponent chose to do. And for that, he paid me 65 banners. So uh, pretty easy. I probably could have squeezed more banners out of that. I mean, I, I'm sure I could have. I only used one uh, one reserve. But uh, anyways, after that, that was pretty quick into the match. Only, you know, 45 minutes or so in. Um, and here we'll take a look at my feats. Uh, I got 55 attempts to stun, so I have uh, 45 to go next time. I also didn't get a screenshot. I need to kill uh, 10 more people with Han, uh, but that'll be for later. Um, now, so this is the ending board uh, again as I left it and then went back into work and when I came back out my opponent had attacked some. I was like, oh cool, they're, they're actually in the middle of their attacks. Um, you know, this will be cool. I'll, I'll be able to, uh, you know, watch. And and then I clicked into it, and uh, they'd taken three battles on my Jedi Revan, which they had a faster Jedi Revan, actually. Or, or rather, Darth Revan. Um, so I don't know what happened there. They failed one against my Bounty Hunters, failed one against my General Skywalker, and, uh, you know, just wasn't looking that good and then uh, they killed my Geonosians and then <laughs> this didn't even attempt my Jedi Revan which I get um, it was already over at that point after their first fail it was over and um, so I ended up getting the win here the, my Akbar team sighed a big sigh of relief because they didn't want to have to mess with this dude and you know 1922 is an okay number of banners to get it, you know you want to be closer to 1930 to feel really safe but frankly like my my defense has been strong enough that i feel pretty confident if i get that score if i get 1922 like it's going to be pretty hard for my opponents to uh, full clear me more efficiently than that so Anyways, we are 7-0, uh, 
feeling good. My next opponent is going to be super tough. Uh, don't miss that match. It's going to be a slugfest for sure. Uh, they put a lot of really strong teams on defense. So uh, check that out. And uh, anyways, guys, I'll let you go here. So thank you so much for watching. And remember that in all things, Zareth prevails. <laughs>